As you begin building applications with Adamus, it's likely that you're going to come across some repetitious query statements that you're going to have to define and maintain in multiple different places throughout your code base. For example, let's say that whenever we're querying from our task model, we're almost always going to have to apply this where not statement. So for example, we're going to want to almost always query where our tasks are not complete. Instead of defining this statement in all of our different task queries, we can extract this out into a query scope that's defined as a public static method on our model. And then we can use that query scope instead of supplying this where not statement so that we're only maintaining this particular where not statement in one place, which is on our model. So let's go ahead and walk through an example here. So let's take this where not statement and let's extract it out into a query scope that's on our task model. Since query scopes are defined as public static methods, we're going to have public static and then we can name this whatever we want. Since we're explicitly defining a where not statement where our tasks are not complete, Maybe we can name this incomplete. And then instead of calling a method directly here, we're going to have this be returned back a value from a method that we're going to call, which is scope. And scope is being imported from Adonis Lucid ORM. So it's one of the exported items from that package. And once we call this scope method, we can provide it a callback function. And this callback function is given an argument of our query scope. So here we can call query. And then from here, we can treat this just as any normal query builder. So we could do where not status ID status and complete. So here is our first valid query scope. So we call scope, we provided a callback function and the callback function is given a query instance. And then off of that query instance, we can chain off any of the query builder methods that we might need for this particular query scope. So let's go ahead and save that and let's jump back into our task controller and let's replace this where not statement with our newly defined query scope. So let's go ahead and get rid of this where not. And so we can call query scopes by calling the apply method. And then within the apply method, we can define a callback function, which is given our query scopes. So here we do scopes, scopes, dot incomplete and then we need to call this as a function and so now we've successfully replaced our where not statement with our incomplete query scope in most cases though it's probably not going to be just this easy we're going to need to provide some sort of data so that we can filter off of it in our query scope so for this example let's say that we don't want to query all incomplete tasks for all users we just want incomplete tasks for a particular user where they're assigned to a particular user more or less so where and then we could do assigned to, and now we need to provide some form of user ID. So here, this would be user ID. So we can use the second argument here to define that we want to accept a user ID of type number. So we can go ahead and save this. And then on the inverse side where we're calling it, we just need to provide some form of user ID. So let's do const user ID equals two, and then provide that user ID. So now we're good to go. Now we can actually make this a little bit more dynamic by making this user ID optional. So now we can use this incomplete query scope to either get all incomplete tasks or all incomplete tasks for a particular user. Now we need to change this where statement just a little bit. So let's replace it with an if user ID. And then with this, we can provide the callback function, which is given the inner query scope query dot. And then let's go ahead and just get rid of that parentheses and then add one to the end. So with this if statement, we're checking to make sure that the user ID is truthy. And since our database is going to default the first user with an ID of one instead of zero, we're A-OK -okay with that check. And then the if statement accepts a second argument where we're given the query instance. And this query instance will only run if the user ID here is truthy. If it's not truthy, it will just skip this query callback altogether. And then within here, we're just doing our check where the assigned to is the user ID. And so since we're doing our due diligence here to check and make sure that we actually have a user ID, we can go ahead and cast this user ID to a type of number to get rid of that little TypeScript argument there. And there we go. Now let's say that maybe if we're not given a user ID, we don't want to run this where not statement at all. So let's go ahead and get rid of this if and what we can do to perform that check is instead of within the query builder statement itself, we can perform this check outside within the query scope function. So we can do if not user ID, then just return. So now if we're not given a user ID, it's just going to skip applying this where not statement altogether. Okay, so the if statement version is probably a little bit more useful. So let's go ahead and just leave it there. Okay, and now next, let's talk about applying multiple query scopes to a particular query builder statement. So in addition to this incomplete here, let's go ahead and define another query scope here. And let's say that we want this query scope to query for all tasks that were created this month. So we can define our scope here provided our query callback. And then we can simplify this check by using Luxon to get 30 days ago. So let's do 30 days ago equals date time. We'll get the local date time, subtract, so minus days 30 to a SQL date time string. Okay. And then next we can apply our query. So query dot where, and then created at is greater than or equal to our 30 days ago. All right, so now we have our second query scope here created this month. 
So let's go ahead and jump back over to our task controller. And so now to apply the second query scope, we actually have two different options. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this down a little bit so it's a little bit more readable. Okay, so the first way that we can go about this is just chaining it directly off of our prior query scope. So we could do created this month, and now this will apply both query scopes to this query builder statement. Alternatively, we can also call apply a second time and call it just the same as we did before. So now both of these ways are perfectly valid and either one will run both query scopes within this query builder statement. Now, since within query scopes, we can harness almost the full power of the query builder. We can utilize this to simplify repetitive relationship queries as well. So for this one, let's go ahead and jump into our user model and let's define a couple query scopes for our user. So here we'll do public static. And for the first one here, let's go ahead and just check whether or not the user has any assigned tasks. So has assigned tasks scope, get our query call back here. And then we'll want to query where has, and you're gonna notice here within this pop-up here, the relation type is undefined. So now the main thing to note here is that since scope is called as a function within our model, it doesn't really have the reference of this. So it can't tell what model it's actually in. So to help it out a little bit here, we can define the model type for this scope. So here where we're calling scope here, we're gonna find the type and let's do type of, and then whatever model we're in, in this case, our user. And so now if we try our where has again, you'll see now we correctly get our dropdowns for our autocomplete options. And in this case, we're gonna want our assigned tasks since we're checking for assigned tasks. And now the second thing to note here is that since we already have a variable with the name query, we cannot use query for our subquery for our where has statement. So instead we can name this either Q or maybe just we can give it a better name of task query. So we can call task query dot where not status ID and hold up a minute. What am I doing here? Let's not use this where not. Let's make use of our query scope. So we can do scopes, scopes dot incomplete. So now within this query scope, we're doing a where has check. And then within our where has check, we're applying a query scope from our task model, getting all tasks that are not complete. So incomplete. In addition to performing a check on whether or not we have any assigned tasks, we can also preload the assigned task the same way. Let's do public static with assigned tasks equals scope. And then again, we're gonna to want to define the type here. So type of user query within our callback here. Let's do query dot preload assigned tasks. Do our task query, task query dot apply scopes scopes dot incomplete and then if you wanted to you could also do created this month however since that's not really defined within the name of with the sign task i'm going to go ahead and leave that off so now we can go ahead and save that and so now with that we have two different relation-based query scopes that we can use. And then lastly here, let's quickly cover nested query scopes or calling query scopes within another query scope. We've kind of done it here, but we're gonna do it in a little bit of a different fashion. So let's go ahead and jump back into our task model where we have our incomplete and created this month query scopes. Okay, and then let's go ahead and define a third query scope, public, static, and then let's say we want to combine these two query scopes. So we'll do incomplete this month scope, and then again, we're gonna to want to define a type of so that we have the query scope definitions available to us within our query scope here. So type of, and we're inside the task model. So this will be a type task query, query dot, and then we'll want to apply so that we can apply both of these two query scopes. So scopes, scopes dot incomplete and created this month. And so here we are now applying both of these two other query scopes within this single query scope. So that kind of gives you a strong idea of how you can utilize query scopes to vastly simplify your additional queries out in your controllers and out in your services. So with that, we've wrapped up our creating, reading, updating, and deleting our CRUD lessons. In the next lesson, we're gonna be learning about validation. Using validation, we're gonna be able to ensure that the data that we're pulling from our database matches exactly what we expect.